Empower 11, the best of its kind in a highly transformative time. Are you empowered? Ready to turn your life up to 11? Awaken the life of who you are on the inside to match the life you were meant to live on the outside. Empower 11, now is your time. Greetings and welcome to Empower 11 Radio. Today is Wednesday, December 19th, 2012. It is uh, our uh, almost our last show. Next week will be our last show of the year. Um, and uh, yeah, we're, we're live here coming to you from Santa Barbara County. Uh, my name is Jack Voorhees and I'm sitting next to my beautiful, stunning, amazing... Gorgeous, talented, inspirational. <laughs> I'm running out of adjectives. Uh, Anne Ribley. Well, hello there, Jack Voorhees. You're looking very fun and festive yourself. We actually got a late start on this because he was doing a little dance over there before <laughs> the show started. Yes, yes, we're we're running seven seconds behind, so we really need to make up that seven seconds. We have a big and, show though today, so we need I to... know it's amazing. I mean, this is. Uh, uh, I don't know how we're going to fit this all into a one-hour show, but we will do our best. I uh, just want to get a couple things out of the way. Uh, Facebook.com forward slash Empower11. Make sure you go there, l hit like, uh, keep informed of everything that's going on with Empower11. And you can also uh, email us at, um, the email address is info at Empower11.com. And, of course, you can go to our website, which is empower11.com. Um, the, uh, the thing I want to mention is it's E-M-P-O-W-E-R, the number one, the number one, dot com. So uh, make sure you put it in there right so you can find all the good stuff about uh, Empower 11, what we're doing, watch our videos, and listen to our radio shows, and read our stuff yes and hear about all the wonderful things that we're cooking up here and doing in power 11 i'm excited about today's show because there's a lot of power in taking the time right now at this time of the year where we are all tied into a ritual and tradition of the holidays mm -hmm. and looking at really how rituals are what's shaping our lives so how can we get rituals to empower us I have a lot to say about this because I feel like this is the foundation of our lives. Yeah, it's it's a foundation and it's also the bricks that build uh, our empire, you know, that, that build our, our dreams. And, you know, the, these things start with the the actions that we do, these these rituals. I mean, there there's a lot of ways to look at rituals. There's the rituals and their the traditions and, you know, how we get married and you know i think if you're jewish they, they break a glass or something and they have all these kind of traditions and why do they why do you think we have traditions Anne? well i think you know traditions or rituals or these um moments of reverence with symbology mm -hmm. is designed to help root something into a deeper meaning and become part of us and that's why today I'm excited about today's show, which is what are the rituals that we have right now in order to turn our life up to 11, in order to create that congruency with the life we want to live out in the world to the life that is a match to the life we know inside ourselves. So a lot of times when you talk about the symbol of these other rituals, such as getting married and graduation and all these right that's like a rite of passage the the idea is is to give reverence to it to give honor to it so that mm. we become more of ourselves you know when you look up uh, uh rituals in wikipedia it says uh, a ritual is a set of actions performed mainly for their symbolic value now 
we're, we're talking about going beyond that, but why would we have a symbolic value in, in these things? And, and what does it do to empower us? And I have a, a strong uh, belief that these uh, rituals, they help to connect us. They help us to feel connected. And the more we realize that we are connected, the more secure we feel and the more powerful we feel as well. I think that's an interesting point. And the reason why I believe that's an interesting point is because we as human beings have the capacity to be so grand and glorious and beyond just a very primitive level of like an animalistic level. So let's just take what you're saying about connection, the rituals of connection. I mean, even even with uh, our relationships on an intimate level, the ritual of making love, it is designed to give us so Ooh, much. Yeah, sign me up for that one. <laughs> it's designed to give us that deeper capacity of connection. And that is why when um, an intimate relationship loses that ritual of connection, mm -hmm. a disconnect happens. And that is also why when when it doesn't have the feeling of connection and it's done in just a going through the motions kind of way with people that we don't care about or with some you know someone that we not, don't have that deep connection with like in our deep intimate relationship with it can feel empty because that is a, a ritual that's built into what makes us whole as human beings to enjoy mm. our experience of connection together and become fuller better expressions of ourselves and it is one of my favorite rituals <laughs> and, and, and and i highly i highly recommend that you do this ritual daily it, I know that can sound crazy to some people. Some people say, daily? I don't have time for to do that daily. But, you know, really the ritual of having connection with our intimate partners. I mean, I know we're jumping ahead with some of the conversation that we have. But you, you, the, what brought that up to me, Jack, is when you talked about that it's more than, rituals are more than just the symbol. It's a connection. And I think one of the greatest thriving yearnings in our relationships that we have as human beings is that desire to connect. And there's many facets and levels to that. It's to connect with not only like an intimate partner and a person who you journey with, but it's your community, your family. Mm -hmm. so I was going to expand it from there. Your family, then your community, your purpose, right. your ability to serve, your ability to share your gifts. And we feel that this time of the year when, when we have traditions like the holidays. Yeah, and you know, there's there's also these uh, you know the, these rituals that become like habits and and habits. You know, I used to feel like um, you know a lot of habits were like autopilot, and I used to shy away a lot from like uh, autopilot because you know like. Um, you know, before recovery, you know, my autopilot always uh, sent me in a, in a direction that I didn't want to be in, you know, that that, right. that didn't serve me well. And um, I used to think that would numb you out to life is to have these autopilots. But this, uh, the, these habits, these rituals, this, this autopilot type uh, behavior, when you have these positive, when you're doing it in this, this really positive way, and you're conscious about how you set your autopilot, then, um, you know, it makes life easier. It, it just, uh, it, it, everything becomes in, in flow. It, it's like, uh, cause you become used to doing it. It's part of your daily routine. It's, it's part of your thing. And therefore it doesn't require all this like, uh, uh, energy to, um, to, to, you know, keep, keep in this good space. Well, when you look at auto, well, there's a lot to be said about that, Jack, what you're saying with, with autopilots, because with the idea of autopilot is that it's part of the nature of life that we've set up to make our lives easy to navigate is to the more that we can have a certain ritual or routine the, happen, the easier it becomes to follow through with that. And actually what that does is it brings the sense of God, that good orderly direction to life. Because think about it, if 
if everything was on a whim and it didn't have that good organizing pattern, that's really what rituals do for us. They can they can actually create good organizing patterns. Like if you look at like just go out in nature and you think about that if the way the seasons change and and the and the ways that when like trees lose their leaves and they come back or they bear fruit, like if this was all done on a whim but not some sort of ritualistic organizing higher pattern then then the chaos that would happen but it's really that place of God good orderly direction where we have these patterns of autopilot that build and that create organization to our lives so the great part about us as human beings is that we have the ability to design that for ourselves yeah, the, the downfall for autopilot is that it, you can become hypnotized. It, it can it can dull our uh, our aliveness. You know, it, it can um, you know, especially if this autopilot isn't set correctly. So I think it's really important to keep this in balance and to take a look. You know, every so often, take a few steps back, look at what you're doing, why you're doing it, and uh, make sure it lines up with the the values and the purpose of who you are. Okay, so then that really, you know, the autopilot, the the tracks that make it be built are the rituals we do. Like people don't really realize that it is a ritual like how we walk in the door and we greet the people we love. I mean, we've got our rituals in which in, in which we do. It. It's a ritual for some people to get home from work turn on the TV, drink a beer, that's their ritual and the idea and that becomes their autopilot. And it's like, that's where this dulling can happen if in fact we are doing these rituals and we don't even understand that that's what we're really doing and we're building these habits of autopilot behavior. Hmm. And yeah, I mean, we, we've gotten like, you know, I've not often seen that people start doing these things that serve them well they become habits and stuff but then for some reason something happened some glitch and they stop doing it they stop doing the things that were serving them so well and getting them on the road to where they wanted to be you know because the these uh these rituals these habits these these daily do's you know they, i mean these things are the the building blocks of our lives that the you know we and I was doing research uh, on on this subject and I came across a video and I was listening to uh, a speaker and he was speaking about uh, you know look listen I can tell you know I you know if somebody is, you know working out is part of their daily ritual ritual you know I it, it's obvious you you look at them and 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 it, you can't just do it all at once it's these little things that this momentum and stuff that you want to stay in. You know, in order to continue this thing, uh, this this really good uh, energy, and you know, we we talk about it in uh, in recovery, and uh, if if you're new to the show, it's uh, I'm going to be celebrating 15 years of uh, of uh, recovery uh, sobriety in uh, in January, um, and uh, so I, I have. Uh, a lot to say about that subject but you know we talk about it's easier to stay sober than it is to get sober yeah I look at it it's like taking off on an airplane you know it takes a lot of energy to get the airplane up in the air but then once it's up in the air there's sort of an autopilot navigation there's a lot of ease and flow that you can use to sustain yeah it doesn't take as much fuel you know I mean they really gotta they really gotta hit the gas when you, you know you're you're lift off trying to, to get up but once you're you're up and soaring through the air it, it takes a lot less energy yeah so in our lives you know the thing i want to look at with today's show is is what are our rituals that we're doing right now and what's the most pressing need that we have like what is just screaming out for your attention is it with your health is it with your your finances and your wealth? Is it with your relationships? Is it with your career? Is it with your purpose? Like pick the thing that really needs to be turned up to 11 that's just screaming to get congruent with you, with a place that feels like it's a match to what you know to be true you should be feeling on the inside and the experience you want to be having outside in your life. And start just taking a look and let the conversation open up with, okay, what are the rituals? 
Yeah, I mean, this is a great time of year to be doing this. And, and, you know, many people think, oh, New Year's resolutions, you know, they don't work. You know, I always fail at New Year's resolutions. But, you know, the New Year's resolution shouldn't be to lose weight. The New Year's resolution should be to do the daily things that are going to help you to lose weight. Well, it or, should be the rituals to sustain a healthy body. You know, like, for example, people look at me. And a lot of times, and, and I've talked about this in the show, that people think, oh, well, it's easy for you, Anne, because, you know, look at how thin you are and you're in shape and it's easy for you. It's like, oh, okay, you know, it's the holidays. And, well, it's easy for you to eat the desserts and not gain weight because look at you, you're thin, <laughs> you're in shape. People think that it means I don't like desserts or they think I... um that I just don't, I don't gain weight if I eat the desserts. The thing of it is, is I embrace all the rituals to keep my body in shape and thin. And so one of the rituals that is, um, that I bow to with deep respect and honor is working out. Yeah, you're on the treadmill just about every day. And that's, um, you know, I mean, that, that, that's such a good thing for you to do. And I know that when you get off track, like when you were doing physical therapy and you had to change that up a little bit, that it was uh, harder for you to do your, you know, something that was so easy for you. And, and I, I've done the same thing. Like, you know, when the weather's great and I'm swimming every day, a half hour is like nothing. I look up and it's like, oh, that's a half hour. Right. And then, you know, I, a cold spell comes in or something and I haven't swam in a week or so. Then I get in there and it's like, oh, my God, it's only been 10 minutes. This is just taking so long. You know, that's the importance of being in a supportive environment in your life picking relationships that are supportive because when you can get the collective honoring and that's what happens when people you know belong to um, different religions or churches or even part of different communities I know like even in AA the the support group that you have it's like there's certain rituals that everybody collectively agrees to in our culture we all are in a collective agreement of of on pretty much majority of us are in a collective agreement on honoring the holidays and these rituals and it makes it easier like our kids going to school it makes it easier because everybody's in agreement that we're going to give honor to these rituals and when we and think about it if every year we didn't have this collective agreement to honor these rituals and we had to decide well do your kids get off for school for these holidays or not it just would create such chaos and the more we can create like an honoring and a supportiveness in our life to these rituals, I think it's easier to stay on track with it. You know, so if you can, for some people, you know, maybe getting themselves in a group or going to, you know, a fitness class or whatever, there's just so many different ways and we got to find our way to get into the support of, of gaining this energy of being in a supportive place with our rituals. Well, not all of us uh, celebrate Christmas on, on December 25th, but uh, it's kind of cool that most of us do because Santa Claus would get really tired if he had to answer all those letters <laughs> all year long. I mean, he needs time to rest up and make, you know, and make the toys and, and all that stuff. I mean, it, you know, you can't ask that man to, to, you know, keep working like that, you know, delivery, you know, all year long. That would That would be really, that would be really difficult. Yeah, so this is where... Again, it's God is that good orderly direction, and you can think about that. It's these patterns. It's these patterns of support and rituals and cycles, and the more we can get that going for ourselves to be intentionalized with the areas that we want. So, you know, it's like you think about there's a, a lot of people that talk about, you know, you pay yourself first, you t set aside 10%. Well, someone who's never done that, that would be really hard to take 10% of their money and put it away in order to invest it and save it for the future. Well, somebody who's been doing this as a ritual from the time they've been paid, it's very easy. So in all the areas of our lives, I want, I want this show to be about really bringing light to those rituals that we need to begin to take charge, get support, get ourselves into our own collective agreement with ourselves and, and those that we can reach out to to get support, whether it's working out, ha taking better care of our body, whether it's even relationships, relationships on an intimate level or even with families. Yeah, and, and if they're not working, you know, this is... Uh, you know, we have we have free will, so we have the opportunity to change and adjust and modify and strengthen what is supporting us, and also relinquish the things you know the, these um, 
rituals or bad habits or, or what have you that uh, are not uh, serving us well. Okay, so I want to have a point to talk about with this is because the holiday, this ritual of honor, honoring the holidays, it brings a lot of feelings up for people. Some people who the source of the holiday rituals are a source of connection and good time and festivities, it brings up good feelings. For those who this ritual has um, created some family dysfunction or it has created a time of sadness or aloneness or, you know, not that same thing, it can also stir those feelings up. And then some people feel obligated to show up and do the same autopilot behavior, maybe in a configuration that doesn't serve them, mm -hmm. in some sort of family tradition or and it's not about breaking my point is not about breaking family traditions yeah. my point is about becoming aware of what's serving you in these rituals you know i i had a small family and well i still have a small family <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh you know so you know things were things were different and and you know what like uh sometimes i spent some thanksgiving uh you know by myself which i was totally cool with at the time you know but um uh, you know, people would always invite me to like family events and, you know, and it's like, they say, oh yeah, yeah, you should come because, you know, this would be better than you being alone. But, you know, then they tell me about this, like horrific stories about, you know, these family reunions. Oh, we always have a fight and, you know, uh, Uncle Ralph, he always gets drunk and <laughs> it's, you know, oh, my mother, oh my God, let me, you know. Let me warn it, you about her yeah, or whatever. Yeah, and I'm like, uh, yeah, I'm fine, you know, uh, I'll just, uh, you know, watch some football and whatever and, you know, I, I, I'm cool, I don't, I don't need to go there, thank you very much, you know, but people, this obligation thing that you're talking about, I mean, people feel obligated to put themselves into situations that aren't supportive of them and, I, I don't, uh, you know, I, I don't necessarily agree with, with that. Well, that's the whole point of the show is to really look at our rituals and become more intentionalized with what we want to create from ourselves. And maybe it is scaling it back. Maybe it is reaching out. You know, for everybody, it's something different. If you're spending, if, if during the holidays you have a lot of lonely feelings and you don't feel like some people when they're not in a relationship feel more isolated, then it's like reaching out. There's like homeless shelters we can get connected to that we can serve and find yeah, ways that... I, and I, I've done that and, and it's always been just just really, really fulfilling. Um, and then, you know, I, it always, like a lot of times it seems like I get involved more than... Um, just that day and that opportunity and, and to, to serve or to share or to, you know, just contribute. And uh, that's just a really good way. It's, it's so odd, like, to feel connected with people that you've just met. And, you, you know, you, you look at these, like, sporting events that, that people go to, you know, that they, they, they go to a football game and their team's winning and every, you know, it's just like, you know, the biggest game of the year and everybody's cheering and everybody's, you know, high five in each what, other. Yeah. Won the world series or whatever. Everybody's high fiving, everybody's hugging, everybody's cheering and everybody's and feeling connected, you know, and they're all doing the wave, you know, and all that stuff. And I mean, that's all this, this connectiveness. And I think that is just a huge part of what the thrill is about that that kind of situation well okay so this brings down to rituals and how can we get to this place where we're we're becoming involved in our own rituals and not in an autopilot way but in a, a way that's going to serve us and like I said during this time of the year for some people they need to reach out more some people need to pull back more and it's finding that good place within yourself because the whole point of this connection of rituals and what we want is to find that good place now I know for myself you know, working out is a ritual that I've given myself that I know is really important. And some people, like, they won't give it to themselves because they get over obligated to show up in all these other ways, taking care of other people, doing stuff for other people, that they don't even know how to get back into that ritual to do it for themselves. Because this whole distraction of 
answering to all these other obligations have become their ritual. And this is where I always say, like, you know, that when the plane is going down, they tell you to put on your own oxygen mask first, because if you are not conscious, you're going to be no good for anybody else. You know, so by taking good care of yourself, taking the time for yourself, setting these things in motion for yourself is allowing you to be good for everybody else. If you, the, the healthier, the stronger, the, the, the better you are for you, the better you are for everyone else around you. You know, it's interesting. I just watched an interview with Richard Branson, and he's an entrepreneur that's a billionaire. Oh, that hack? Yeah, an <laughs> entrepreneur that's a billionaire. Yeah. However, what was interesting is people would say, well, that's because he's got so much money. But he did say, because people were asking about his day, and he was saying it is a ritual to do the first part of his day taking care of his body, mm -hmm. which is, he said, doing some sort of form of physical activity that are that's gonna help his body have well-being and so people would say that oh well it's because you have all this money you can do that now but the truth is he was saying this is the way before he had all his money this is the way he has lived his life and because and, he, and i like to spend the last part of my day helping you with your body <laughs> <laughs> yes, connecting is very good there, Jack Voorhees. It is. It's. I really feel that way. Mm. That the more we can get into that good place of connection with ourselves, and then we have someone to share it with, it just expands that good place within ourselves. And creating rituals that if we can't honor it to ourselves first, it's going to be hard for us to give it to someone else. Absolutely, absolutely. And then less energy, like we were talking about earlier. I mean, because... The, the the better habits that we can form, the better rituals we give ourselves, the easier life becomes, the easier it is to do these things. I mean, sometimes in the beginning, they can seem like very overwhelming. It's like, um, you know, so one of the things that I'm making a conscious effort to do is to drink more water. And I'm like, oh, my God, are you you're supposed to drink this much water? Like, I'm like, and how many how many Starbucks cups does that equal? And she said, the six? And I'm like, oh my God. I mean, this is like, I'm going to drown. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, after, you know, but there was a time that I was drinking a lot more water and it was, uh, it didn't seem uh, as hard to, to do that. And uh, I know I just got to get myself back in track, you know, back into the ritual, back into uh, doing this. And then it'll be much, much easier just to be part of your life. Yeah, I mean, just that there's a I have a whole Empower H2O that we're going to be coming out with this and how to use the ritual of drinking water to energize and to create that fluidity in our lives. And so think about it, you know, rituals are really how we are living our lives. And it's like, it's interesting, Jack, that you said you listened to a speaker and he said, I can look at anybody's life and I can tell what their rituals are. I can, you know, see what is the ritual that makes up their life. And when we think about it, we bring it back to, okay, what's the most pressing need that we have right now? And if you can understand what's the most pressing need, what you can understand is you haven't created enough rituals to have it be a match, to turn it up to 11, to have it be congruent with the life you want to live on the outside that's a match to what you feel life should be on the inside. So it's going to take more energy initially to create that honoring in that ritual. But the more we stay consistent and we bow to the respect of it and give it the reverence, the easier it gets for us to implement. Yeah, this starting, stopping, starting, stopping stuff too. It, it just it doesn't give you that momentum. Oh, that it, this, it just makes it it's so... It's so like chunky, it's so heavy, it's so um, it's so difficult to to get into that. I mean, it's like starting again and again and again and again. It's just, uh, you know, and I saw it in recovery when people would say, relapse. I was going to say like, that. Oh, my God. I mean, it's like the more you relapse, the easier it is to relapse. And um and then the devastation that, that would come with that. and um, It's how it, it makes us feel when we do that, too, because... Yeah, I mean, they come back more and more of their spirit just crushed, you know. And then, and then worst case scenarios is they didn't come back. And uh, often with tragic uh, circumstances, and I've been to... Uh, too many funerals and uh, in fact there was a time that I, I actually I just refused to go to any more funerals because uh, uh, you know I mean I wanted to celebrate and it 
you know, I want to celebrate people's recovery and, and people, you know, becoming empowered. And I wanted to, I just couldn't take any more of that, um, that devastation. Well, that's where you would hear people would say, it took me 10 years to, to get, get one year. Right. Yeah. So that's yeah. that cycle. So that's a, to only have one year under your belt, but you've been working at it for 10 years. That's, that's an enormous chunk of real estate of your life. Yeah. And so it's funny yesterday, this reminds me of a story and this is more on a simplistic lighter note, but, um, my son CJ is 12. And so he just got in middle school and he's in honors and he set up Yay, CJ, very <laughs> proud of him. Very yes. Proud. And um, so he was sixth grade, he was in elementary school, which so that was like, he was like a class clown goofing around. And, you know, um, the one of the teachers said, you know, he, you need to get him tested for honors and, and get him a little more focused. And so he did, he got into honors. And what happened was, is he started out the year saying, I want to get all A's. And that was what he started out saying. And, and it was interesting watching him rise up to doing that. Well, he so he had all A's in all his classes, however, but one. He started out with a B. And he fought tooth and nail all year to try to get it up to an A. So yesterday, the grades are going to be coming out. He took the final test, which he aced like a 98%. But he still did not know if that was going to bring him up to an A. And under certain qualifications, the teacher would allow extra credit if you've not had any missing assignments, which was his case. So he... I took him over to the school for him to have a, a conversation with the teacher to find out where his grades set after that. And and um, and he's doing what he, it looked like after that grade came in and this extra credit paper he could do, he's going to come up to an A and he'll have his 4.0. But here's my point. He walked out of there and he said, I know what I got to do now. He goes, I am not doing that again to myself. He goes, I'm going to start out with an A and I'm not going to mess around because it was way too hard to be at a B to try to get up to an A. Yeah. yeah, you had to do, um, you know, one extra credit assignment probably would have got him the A, but two would have ensured it. And so he, he decided did, that. Yeah, so he did two extra credit projects yesterday. <laughs> yeah, and it was like five, six hours it took from him from the time off to school to... Yeah, I mean, that's a lot for a little kid. I mean, that's... But, the, but the, the, well, the point of that whole story is the same thing in all of our lives, is it's like... It, there was an enormous amount of pressure and energy because he started out not totally giving his all in that particular subject because he says it's the most boring teacher and he had all his reasons. But then he realized it like none of that's an excuse anymore. I'm going to give it my best and start out at the top versus like trying to climb my way back up there. And that's what happens to us when when we allow this distraction and this, you know, sloppiness into our lives and this non-honoring place, if it's we're just going through the motions and we're settling, we're settling for a place with our finances that doesn't feel good to us, we're setting, settling for a place with our relationships that don't feel good to us, if we're settling for a place in our career or our purpose that doesn't feel good to us, when we get sloppy like that, then it and the longer we set there, the more energy it takes to get out of that place. Yeah, so I mean, these rituals can help us with our our, our health, our wealth, our, our relationships, our, our purpose, our, you know, our, our, our spiritual well being. Um, you know, so like wealth, you talked about like the the person saving the ten percent, you know, and how that can become an easy thing to do or, or what have you. You can set in these rituals that that can help you with with wealth and with health it can be working out it can be eating better drinking water i mean what have you uh relationships you know your your intimate and your family i mean there there's there's things that rituals like that you don't even think about i mean and has there been a day in our relationship that we've been together that i haven't told you that i loved you you are really good with that. I almost feel like, wow, I need to tell this man more often too. He tells me all the time. And so, you know, and, and that's just, that's, it's not, I mean, that's just part, that's a ritual of uh, honoring the love I have for this woman is that I let her know and, uh, you know, purpose. So, I mean, well, the, well, real quick, okay. I want to talk about you because there's the intimate relation and then there's the family and it's like. You know, we have family. We live in a time that people have family all over the place, but it's even taking the time, even if it's one day a week, one day a month, whatever works for our lives and creating a ritual to, to check in, to connect and 
and to develop that place. And it's like, what is our ritual with how we say goodbye to the people we love? And it's mm -hmm. like when you say, Jack, how often do, is there ever a day I don't tell you I love you? And that's true. It's like the rituals of love that you do um, are. Yeah, with with the family, I mean, I I make a point to, to reach out, you know, and uh, you know, I have a son in, in Michigan and we Skype a lot and stuff, you know, and that's important to uh, maintain that connection. And, you know, my, my mother the other day, I just, I just uh, sent her a text and I said, you know, I just want you to know that if you were, if you ever needed any me, you needed my help, I would be on the next plane out. And she just, uh, she was really touched by that, you know, but that that's just part of letting people know that you give a damn, yeah. you know, that, that, uh, that they, and that makes them feel more connected. That lets, and that ensures that connection is stronger. You know, when you, when you, when I tell, uh, Anne that I love her, that, uh, you know, that keeps our connection strong. I mean, we think about it. We do this with our children when they're small. As you know, we 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 tuck them in bed, we kiss them good night, we we take that ritual of letting them know, you know, sweet dreams, you matter, good night, <clears throat> and it's sustaining that level in our lives with that connection. And it doesn't matter whether someone's a little small child or they're big. It's keeping that sense of ritual honoring and respect mm -hmm. to the relationship of connection. So then when we talk about purpose and, you know, we talk about, you know, the career, the service, the sharing who you are and stuff, you know, it, there's these little things that we can do. And, you know, so um, like a, a friend of mine, uh, uh, Daniel uh, Callahan, he uh, he has a job that he works and, you know, he, he, has, he digs what he does and everything. But, he, you know, he has aspirations to go beyond that and stuff. So, you know, he started this website called trailandmountain.com and uh you know go and check it out he's got some reviews he does video reviews and things like that so the, he puts you know, part of his ritual is he gives some love to that part he 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 uh he's you know after work and all that stuff he, he gives a little bit you know and he has certain times of the week that he gives a little bit more than others but that is he set that up as a ritual so this thing is continuing to build and build and you know now he's uh starting to really make some headway with that well yeah i mean companies are asking now for him to review their products he's being asked to do he's being asked to go do some tours and adventure things and so it's all this comes about when we when we honor the ritual of following our <clears throat> our purpose and a lot of people think that it well if you're in a job or you're in a career that you don't have time to create these rituals to follow your purpose now that's an example where he's following his purpose and he's creating the ritual after work but there's other ways right now that all of us can get in the business of being getting a ritual whether it's like you know once a month we go to a homeless shelter whatever it is to get in the business of service and being on track with our purpose well and sharing who you are so i mean and, you know you and i have our rituals we we have many of them and uh you know we have our nightly okay but uh we, have, we even play a game together jack yeah. and i do that's part of our rituals of yes we play we play a game called rummy cube and uh uh, I, I am in the process uh, on our series of, of uh, really, uh, um, <laughs> I, how do I say this delicately? You, um, say what? That you're bragging? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. That, I, that I'm bragging about the fact that I'm kicking your ass at Rummy Cube right now. Okay. But, uh, you know. The, but that is not his ritual. <laughs> oh, yes, it is. I, I beg to differ but the the thing is uh you know we we do a radio show and then that's, that's a ritual and that and that lines up with our purpose you know the who we are you know sharing um what you know life skills that we have that we can share them with the world and you know that that's um uh something we you know we we prepare in advance we we do these mind maps and we collaborate uh, on these things and then we you know, we sit down and we have a discussion about it, and uh, uh, you know, and then there's many other things that that we do um, together and separate that are in the um, they're in that state of honoring um, who we are, what we're here for, what our purpose is, and uh, you know, defining that. 
uh, improving upon that and sharing that. You know what's really good, the ritual that we have as a family, and it's like becoming obsolete in today's times, is we actually sit down and eat dinner together. You know, a lot of families today are just so um, disconnected and, um, you know, scattered all over the place that people are not even sitting down eating dinner together. And that's a ritual that in our busy lives that, you know, we still take the time to do and honor. Yeah. You know, and, and, and we hold we hold people um, accountable to that, too, you know, in our, in our family, uh, that this is something that that we honor and this is a time where we should be uh, getting along. There shouldn't be, you know, nobody reads a book at the table. Nobody brings electronic to the table. I mean, that that's, um, we just, we eat and we talk and um, uh, we encourage good behavior. Yes, but it's interesting because there's been times that like, you know, um, CJ being in middle school and honors and all his homework, he'd say, I can't sit down and eat dinner together. I got homework. I'm going to be busy, busy, busy. But we say, no, you do have, 15 minutes to sit down with all of us. And so mm -hmm. that is a ritual that, that, and it's funny because, you know, when I tell other people that we sit down and eat dinner together, they're like, well, how often do you do it? I'm like, every day, you know, every day that we're all home, we, which is, you know, five out of seven days of the week or more. Yeah. Yeah. And, it, it, you know, I mean, it's a good, it's a good, I mean, there's that connection there that that's important. Yeah, I want to um, share something about something that really empowered me um, with uh, making these rituals. That uh, I mean, I, I um, when it, when I, I I mean when my life balance got really out of whack, and you know I, I made all these uh, changes in in two thousand ten. Um, you know, really, I mean, it's like my life had crumbled down and I was rebuilding. Um, so, you know, I had this big whiteboard and uh, and I've talked about this in other shows, but uh, it's just a really, really good tool that I used. Um, but part of what I did with this is I put a list on this board about the daily things that I would do uh, to keep myself sane and, you know, healthy and, and everything. And, you know, I, I'd write down things like, um, you know, pray, meditate, uh, go to meetings, uh, work out, drink water, do, you know, all these, these things that I would list there and I would check them off as I was doing them during the, the day or I'd reflect in the evening and I'd look at, you know, what I had got, what I had done in the day. And, it, you know, I just started adding more and more things to this list. So it got to the point where I couldn't do everything every day. But I, you know, I made an agreement with myself as long as I did most things, most days, then I was, uh, um, I was good with that. And man, did that, it, it really kicked things into gear for me. It really like started this flow of really positive energy, good vibration, being in tune and, um, you know that with accompanied with my decision to really start loving my life and not waiting for x y z to happen incorporated with this just uh turn you know started turning my life up to 11. yeah so what's interesting for the story that you're saying jack as i start out the show is i want people to look at what's their pressing need and how to empower those pressing needs so that their life starts to get congruent with who they are on the inside. Is it with finances? Is it with relationships? Is it with your career? Really taking an honest inventory and saying, what is my most pressing need? You know, it's really hard if someone's like in a marriage that's not working to really like begin to change this ritual that has happened of what's ensuing and creating this um, autopilot life. That's just one example, but I'm saying all these capacities of our lives. You know, I want people to look at what's the most, and because I'm doing this in my own life. I'm looking at the areas too in my own life that what do I really want to turn this up to 11? What area do I really want to get this full on congruent and exponential in its momentum where I feel like when it comes to health and well-being of the body, I mean, I've got so much 
momentum under that, that that is really an easy thing for me to sustain and do. But then there's other areas of my life, you know, especially in the areas of career where I'm looking to, you know, bring it to a whole nother level. And because of raising kids and changes in my business life and stuff. So I'm, I'm looking to bring that to a whole nother level. And what I think is really interesting is I'm asking everyone, you know, you that's listening right now, what is that area? What is that pressing need? But now what's interesting of how it ties together with this whiteboard with you, Jack, is that. Well, you, just knowing what that pressing need to. Well, you brought up a lot of areas. That's what I want to yeah. say. You using this whiteboard, you brought up, you raised up, you empowered in so many capacities with relationships because that's i mean it came out of that mm -hmm. it in um finances and all, i mean almost all your manifestations of what you desired on the inside started to become a match in your life well i mean it did mm -hmm. so i want and you to you talk know, a little bit conscious because it was right there in front of my face all the time you know and and that really um ensured the awareness you know that uh it wasn't like something I wrote down and put away. Yeah, the re so the reason why I was wanting to point that out is I want somebody to walk away today listening to the show and embracing at least one area of their life that they, they change the rituals to really support and turn their life up to 11 that empowers them with the life that they want to be living on the outside to be a match with what they know to be true on the inside. But I want to emphasize the power of the story you're sharing about the whiteboard because actually that turned up every area of your life and all, you know, it created these rituals mm -hmm. that then turned up every area of your life. Right. And, and, you know, I, I think by concentrating, focusing on the rituals that, that were empowering, I let go of some of the other ones that weren't empowering. And, uh, I mean, there, there's things that, that we do that just do not empower us, but they become strong rituals in our lives and so strong that we believe that we need them in order to maintain. You know, we believe that we need to have our... Uh, four hours of TV every night in order to calm down and you know get uh, get cool headed or whatever you know you like you, I need that for that me time in it turns out to be four hours and then oh wait there's a new show on that's really great and now it's five hours a night or something you know, crazy out of that that's life out of balance and it's like oh well you know I work really hard so I need to come home I've and have heard a few drinks. Or I've heard yeah. that or watch TV or check out or tune out. Right. You know, instead of a connection, I've heard that a lot, that I'm entitled to this Yeah. tune well, out. Disconnect. <laughs> yeah. Which I'm not saying that there's things wrong with, with that. It's just the balance of that is the, what's really important. That, you know, the... If it's if it's out of balance, then and it's not serving us well. However strongly we feel that we deserve it, we need it. This is my thing. This is my you know. This is uh, I, I've heard people talk in, in recovery about you know. Well, it's my one vice you know that I need to you know. Mm -hmm. um, you know I, I hate I quit I quit drinking I quit drugs I'm not gonna quit smoking cigarettes I love my cigarettes. But then, you know, that that's not a healthy life when they're doing things that are so unhealthy for them. Yeah, so for me, I, I do journaling. It's part of my rituals, and I do it every day, and this helps. So that's what you've been doing. I've been seeing you <laughs> with that little book, and right. I have no idea. Okay. It's so funny. We were at a, um, a resort uh, maybe two weeks, I don't know, and um, every morning, you know, I'd be out by the ocean, by the pool or whatever. And I'd be, you know, journaling. And, and finally this, this one woman, she's like, I'm watching you like writing all the time. What are you doing? And then I was like, well, I'm, I journal every day, you know, I'm a writer too, but you know, it's the fact that that part of my rituals is I journal every day and I do it regardless if I'm on vacation or not. It's just, it's just, a, it's an honoring, a thing that I do that is spiritual in nature. It's mental in nature. And it also primes my creativity for me. And, and I also, whether we're on vacation or not, honor our, our nightly ritual. 
<laughs> Jack worries. He's touching me right now, <laughs> nice and tenderly. <laughs> and my treadmill, that's that's definitely. Now, I want to talk mm. about the new moon ritual. I know that's been something very empowering for not only you, but uh, um, many other people who use this tool in order to uh, empower themselves. So the, this this new moon uh, ritual, the this... Uh, well, know, really, it's a, it's a relinquishing and a becoming ritual that, that ties into the moon cycles because it's naturally how we synchronize. It's back to this idea of patterns. And it's it's no secret that, you know, the fishermen know they'll catch more fish from the new moon to the full moon because it's just, it's how this manifestation synchronizes. It's no secret that there's a far, farmer's almanac that tells the moon cycles because when they plant the seeds has to do with how they're going to reap the harvest that they have. So it, it's, there's no escaping the fact that we are a connected universe and all of these energies are playing a part of how we're, our intentions are, our energy is, there's a pulling back, there's a pushing out. There's, you know, it's the breathing in and breathing out. So I, what I've done is just synchronized with that and that on the full moon, that which is dark needs to get light brought to. And, and I release that in a, in a, in a um, ritual, which is on my website, if anybody wants to know more about how to do that. And which then, is annribley.com. Yes. A-N-N-E-R-I-B-L-E-Y.com. Yeah. And it's under the empower change section. It's on the menus. And then on the new moon, it's also the time that you can write what you want to, what you want to become and bring into your life. And so twice a month, you know, I'm working on what I want to release and what I want to bring in and I'm synchronizing it with the natural cycles of the universe. And my children have been doing this with me and, you know, Jack, we do this as a family even. And it's mm -hmm. like, so they, it's great because it gives them that same opportunity to know that they can work on the things they want to let go of. So it's a, just a powerful ritual. And there's other families that have, that started doing this while we were doing it. And so it's like, and they love it because it doesn't matter the age of their children. Now their children are involved with a ritual that makes them feel empowered with things they want to correct in themselves and also new things they want to bring in. So it's timeless. It's ageless. It's just a powerful ritual that ties into yeah, and, and you know, no matter what your age of your children are, even they're young, at least it's bringing consciousness to what they would like to be gone or what they would like to bring into their lives. Yeah, and self inventory is so Awareness. important. Yeah, yeah, at and at any age, so it's it's a great way. That's a great ritual to begin. And you know, the question I have too for people that in that are of a spiritual nature is that. You know, what is your ritual that you're doing spiritually for yourself? Some people, they go to church weekly and and that is giving them that spiritual sense that they need. Other mm -hmm. people, you know, didn't haven't found it that way. So then what are the ways that they're finding it? You know, some people haven't begun doing that because they don't know how to find it. But it's finding those rituals and those community and places that you belong, that are your people, that you feel that supportiveness to. So I wanted to um, just talk a little bit about, you know, how you would um, implement some of these like new rituals into your life. And, um, you know, the, the way to start is to start. But I think a lot of times overwhelm can can set in and, uh, you know, you, you just got to do if, if it's a daily thing that you need to do, then you do it one day at a time and you don't think about like, oh, I'm going to do this for the rest of my life I'm getting you know um, you know if Ann was to think about oh I'm gonna get on the treadmill and oh, I'm gonna do it every day for the rest of my life it, 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 it that's not as empowering as just you know, saying J just for today I'm gonna do the best that uh, that I have and uh, I'm gonna honor myself and uh, this life I was giving, and I'm going to honor those around me who are going to benefit from me being my best self, and uh, I'm just going to do it a day at a time. You know, it's funny that you say that, Jack, because we've had jokes about how our ritual of connecting at the end of the night. But the truth is, is that um, it, it really starts out in a place of just connecting mm -hmm. with each other, and then it, because that's our intention. And then it always ends up in a good place. And it kind of would seem like 
that's our ritual but really it's the connecting that's our ritual and it's yeah. just fun how every night it ends up in this great experience yes very great <laughs> no <laughs> super I mean, great i know there's no i'm saying totally awesome <laughs> No, I'm just saying that, but that's what keeps it... Hail, hail. <laughs> no, this is what keeps life magical is it's like you're not you're not going... Like you said, if I was like, oh, I got to work out every day for the rest of my life, it's like, you know, it would lose that sense of like, no, I work out, I figure out what am I going to listen to, what am I going to... If I'm going to mm -hmm. watch something, you know, it's, there's just like this freshness that always happens because I'm taking care of my body. And I feel that same way with you and I. It's like I always get amazed. Like, wow, this happened again. This, you know, it's like... It's happened again tonight. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, so I, I talked about the list. I talked about the whiteboard, you know, and, and how empowering that was for me to to make this list. And uh, I'm also starting to, as this new year comes along, you know, uh, making a new list for the new year um, that I, I'm going to honor. And, you know, so the, this list, um, you know, there's the daily, there's, you know, the, you can add weekly, you could add monthly. Um, but I think uh, it's really important at the end of the night to do a, uh, a, a recap. And during the, this, this recap, like, okay, what did I do? You know, did I honor the day? Did I honor, you know, my list? Am I, am I uh, doing what is uh, empowering for me to do? And if you are, then it's important to uh, congratulate yourself because, you know, you need to feel good about that, you know. And then uh, if you haven't, then you either need to recommit um, and and really think about you know what it means like if I do if I if I don't do this if I don't make this part of my daily life play the tape through what's going to happen um, you know what you know uh, the 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 um, unattractive parts that that uh, of, of a life that that would come along with not doing the things that are honoring your life and um, and then uh, w what's going to happen if I do do the things that are going to uh, uh, honor my life? And um, then uh, what, what also might be called for is to, to make a change. You know, it, it's okay. You know, this list um, is there to benefit you. So you may need to adapt it a little bit to um, fit more in harmony with, with, with your life. So, um, you know, what I think that one of the most important things is, is rituals have to be have to have some honoring of repetition. I mean, this mm -hmm. is what we've talked about. And so you have to look at your list and say, what are the ways that I can embrace this to become repetitive on whatever level I'm capable of? You know, it's like you and I with the radio show, we knew that in our schedules that we could create the ritual of a radio show weekly because of the what, what we put into it. Yeah, and, well, we, we were willing to honor that, that we were going to do it weekly. I mean, we could have done it bi-weekly. We could have done it once a month, you know. Or but, daily or just, there's yeah, anything. Yeah, but the the Wednesday we felt like, um, you know, we, that was a good thing that we could, uh, you know, commit to, honor, and get in the repetition of doing it. And, and you know, it, it is, it, the more we do it, it does seem to be more in flow. Yeah, it just gets easier and easier. And mm -hmm. so this energy begins to carry itself. And I want to just want to say one more thing about when you when you look at how, you know, creating this w ritual, you play the tape all the way through. I love that analogy that you give all the time, Jack, is play the tape all the way through. When we look at our lives right now and we look at what rituals are we going to empower, what is our pressing need, begin to play the tape all the way through. If I put this ritual into place, what's going to what's going to play out in my lives if i don't put this ritual in place or i keep the rituals i have which could be distracting mm -hmm. behavior that's just keeping us in a merry-go-round of a place we don't want to be play that tape on through and see where you're going to end up and just start owning this place of the rituals you want to create 
you know, and it might be a big shakeup, which is called for. I mean, maybe these these rituals you can implement in subtle ways that are going to help and um, might feel a bit more in harmony, like like I was talking about w with your life. But there's sometimes a shakeup is called for. So this ritual may may be uh, it might be a big it might be a big jolt. You know, it might be a big pattern interrupt. I mean, th th that might be called for. So. Um, I know you some know. people do will do like a detox if they feel like they've been out of control with the way they've been taking care of their body or eating because what that does is it's like a big shake up and it starts to eliminate all the things that they the, all the things that have become ritualistic patterns of the way they've eaten that they don't want to eat. And, yeah, and but you, they can't stay in a detox. That's you right. I mean, that, that, but that's, that's the shake up. That's not a ritual. I mean, the, that may be the beginning of the ritual is you know, that that might be called for, but. Um, you know, it's got to be part of your routine that you do religiously, that this is, when you talk about religiously, this is the honoring of of self, this is the honoring of, of God, what what have you. This is the, the place of being in that, that uh, true um, uh, uh, gratitude of, of this gift that we were given and the time that we have here in order to live our best lives, be our best selves. Well, that's where I do feel, Jack, what you say all the time is what you don't do is just as important what you do do. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because, you know, these, uh, you know, th these things that we do that don't honor our lives is, becomes like a cancer or becomes like a decay, you know, the, like a tooth decay. I mean, it sets in and it starts to spread uh, like, you know, like cancer does. And you know, life is short. We don't have time for that. Yeah, so if we need to do a shake-up, I agree with you, Jack. It could be about letting go of those parts that we should not be doing and because what we don't do is just as important of what we do do and getting into that intentionalized place with our rituals. Well, I have a closeout here just to help everyone. Yeah, I, I knew we were going to go over. and I mean, I'm surprised that we crammed as much of this uh, valuable nuggets as we, we have into our, our show. And that's the beauty about having an internet radio show is that we if we go over, hey, we go over. Yeah. So I invite all of you in today, wherever you're at, to just take a few breath, deep breaths in and out and get into this synchronistic cycle of your life that belongs to you. And I'm asking you to begin to look into the ways that you can bring ritual to your life. Today, I pick the biggest pressing need that I would like to call forth a resolution. I empower a ritual to make a difference for my most pressing need. Is it health? Is it wealth? Is it relationships? Is it my purpose? Whatever it is during this time, remind me of what's important and allow me to become a better expression of this gift of life. When I empower rituals that help me become more of who I am, I get congruent with who I am on the inside to live the life I'm meant to live out in the world. Today, I look at all the rituals and I become intentionalized with my rituals. How I say goodbye to the ones I love, how I connect to the ones I love, how I love in meaningful ways become my rituals. I look at my rituals of how I take care of my body. I connect to this precious, magnificent gift this body, this home that I live in, and I give it reverence. My rituals become my life, and I give them their due respect. So I thank you for taking the time and allowing this ritual that we have with Empower 11 to share with you in your life. And during this holiday season, I'm wishing the best for you of love, health, prosperity, and peace. And I thank you for sharing with me. Have an empowered week. Yes, and join us next week for our last show of the year. For 2012. But the show in Power 11 Radio continues on yes, as our rituals. And uh, be sure and uh, share um, the, this radio show with those that you care about. Uh, you can always get it on Spreaker, which is the uh, free app that you can get on your smartphone, whether it be an iPhone or Android phone. And uh, you can always... Uh, check us out on iTunes where all of our shows are archived there. And um, we will see you next week, Wednesday, Pacific Time, 11 o'clock. 
And until then, have a empowered week.